Vault Hunters, and welcome back to Borderlands 2. In the last part, Sanctuary has just been apparated away by the Siren, the Firehawk. And in this part, while we ignore Fink's slaughterhouse behind us, one of the most awesome things in Borderlands 2, we are going to listen to Angel continue to derail us. Oh look, frozen people! And he has been destroyed because he was frozen. And now we have Mickey Mouse Tunnel Rats. I don't remember them actually uh, having the red uniforms uh, whilst <laughs> I was going through here, but I'm an idiot, so. <laughs> you didn't you didn't recognize Mickey Mouse? Red red. Nah, I um. I honestly think that uh, when I was going through it, well, a majority of them were under black uniforms, so... Slagged, rat! Slagged. He's slagged. He's been tagged with slag. Throw a frag. Get mag. Eh, but you're not using your grenades, Mr. Uh, Cloud. Yeah, but the idiot walked right in front of me. Headshot. Headshot. Got... Yeah! You dirty rat. <laughs> The fridge, unfortunately, although it levels up a little bit in order to meet the basic difficulty requirements for Fink's Slaughterhouse, which is about level 22, uh, this will be a relatively boring area of the map as long as you, uh, you know, fail to do the quests on time. Right. Wreck attack. So let, now, now refresh my memory, Grab. What level are you at the moment during your playthrough? Eighteen. You're eight. To, you're level eighteen. Okay. So, so in in th about three levels, you can fully enjoy Fink Slaughterhouse. Now we will not see Fink Slaughterhouse for the longest time, but just be because I know you're going to be playing this in the interim, that it just you got to trust me on this. <laughs> it's awesome. All right. Um. <sighs> This brings me back to the other com argument that uh, that you and I have already had, that the levels are not actually all that important in this game, for character levels specifically. You asked last time that I brought this up, how many skull uh, enemies I have actually uh, fought and defeated uh, uh, because of... Uh, um, which would, you know, strengthen the point that level disparity doesn't matter. And I can honestly say that I am at two and a half skull enemies now. I uh, <laughs> had to fight... A uh, skull surveyor, which I don't personally count all that much, but you know it technically counts by your criteria. And I also had to fight a super badass loader that was three levels higher than me. That fight sucked, but I did get through it because, well, as a zero, I'm supposed to capitalize on critical hit uh, on critical hit damage, mm. and by capitalizing on joints, which was super fucking annoying, because because uh, the uh, super badass loader joints are you know really goddamn tiny. Um, yeah, I was I was actually able to t uh, take him down, especially th by using uh, the environment to my advantage. And these are our new enemy type for us, chrysalis. Yes. Shoot the legs. On the set, yes. Shoot the legs all over the place, but ignore the central, the se but ignore the central body because, as a loading screen tip will tell you, the central body reflex bullets. Yes. So on the subject of, you still have to actually shoot the actual crystals as opposed to you know just the legs in general. You have to shoot the crystals that are on the legs, which as you know, as you should be seeing here, deplete sort uh, shortly after you know dealing significant damage to them. So yes, critical hit damage is fucking awesome. It is. I, I don't want to say it's required for super badasses, but it's almost required. I mean, uh, for the loader specifically, I, ha I had problems where I had to where, where I had to use critical hits to my advantage as well as my class action skill in order to dodge around the, uh, the damn tree I was using and um, also um, uh, uh, taking advantage of its cooldown time on its goddamn barrage. Well, I think we will be getting to that particular fight, but it's quite likely that he doesn't spawn for your uh, in your playthrough because I don't think it spawned in the second time I went through that area. Now, Gerda, you were you were wondering how I had such an easy time with the basilisk. So not only do I level up, uh, 
the chrysalis the the chrysalis uh critical hit weaknesses will actually be destroyed in one in one punch depending on your level oh wow so yeah you can you could totally three hit the chrysalis like all day long huh i didn't think of that well, the, uh, mind you, I didn't think of that because uh, with with their size, they're almost certainly a, a melee focused unit. They have projectile attacks, but that's not really what their their specialty is. Their the big thing that you got to worry about uh, for the chrysalis is you know uh, getting up in their face and having them stomp on you. Right, but they're crystals, and we already have been introduced to crystal items on the ground that become bas basically the skag piles. So you punch the crystal, you yeah. get a thing. I'm not sure why I watched that door close all the way, you but I did. The door? What's up? Oh. You, I was just asking why you bothered to close the door. It's it's a fridge. You're supposed to close the fridge door when you're done. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, fine. <laughs> No, I'm the the Highlands Outwash. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. where we start seeing that the Pandora actually has vibrant ecosystems aside from glaciers and deserts. We have normal plains as well. <laughs> we also have invisible assholes. See that? Yes, this is where we get introduced to the stalker type enemies, Stalkers. which are actually really cool. But even when they're invisible, if you've got a shotgun, they're super goddamn easy. They're, you know, uh, just uh, small critters that are uh, floating about. But the big H is still staring you right in the face. You can use any fast travel station to get back to the Crimson Raiders. I'll mark the nearest one on your echo device. And this is where the gauntlet actually starts. This is the only time in the game where you are denied access for reasons. Last must have taken sanctuary off the fast travel network. Okay. Head to the iridium extraction plant nearby. Mm. I hope you're ready to go through a dungeon and a half, because that's what you have to do to, to re-unlock Sanctuary. It, it's it's okay. I like dungeons. The, Zed has got a machine over there. There's, uh, uh... Marcus has got a machine over there. As long as you got ammo, you got uh, No, that's just an ammo dump. It's not a gun shop. You just... The only problem is you can't upgrade your character by spending Iridium. Um, you can't pick up new quests. You can't gamble. That is a, that is until you find the hidden saloon. You overlook. can still pick up quests. We can pick up some quests. You, yeah, there there are some there are some quests that uh, that drop out throughout the world while you're going while, while you're going uh, through this gauntlet. And yes, these... I don't think I bothered to do any one any of them because I was determined to re-unlock sanctuary before the end of that play session, and I did do it. It just was not fun for me. Well, it should it should be your priority, and lo and behold, the game has prepared a challenge for you. A little trap, if you will. Looks like you'll actually have to play the game. Now, what is the critical spot on the on the stalkers? Is it actually the head? It's yeah, it's the head. Because it might I, be the tail. Feel like it is the head, honestly. It's it's some it's is some. Is it actually the tail? Actually. Hmm. It might be the tail. Um, I honestly, I feel tail. like it is the tail, given uh, about the other enemy type that we're about to encounter. <sighs> so the stock, the thing with the stalkers, That's fight that I have to they can about. only they can only generate their invisibility as long as they have a damage shield. But once the damage shield is depleted, of course, by dealing damage to them, either normal or electrical, then they are visible, and they are running away. That was my personal experience. I actually uh, found, um, no, no, no. I, I, each of the spring sp uh, stalkers that I fought uh, all ha all had shields. Okay, never mind. I'm an idiot. Stalker technology. And those and these are skag piles and stalker piles. Actually, no, these are stalker piles, not skag piles. Skag piles have a lot more. Bones. Yeah, these are stalker piles. 
fuck. Am I really just killing stalkers? Me, we're 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 gonna we're gonna pick up the the main quest in a sec. I just wanted to show that yeah, stalkers are a pain in the ass to fight. They run all over the goddamn place. There's usually a lot of them, and they have invisibility. And of course, the invisibility happens after a period of time when they dodge enough and long enough to avoid taking the damage you you need to inflict in order to keep their shields from going back up. Honestly, I find the hot loaders to be uh, significantly more annoying than uh, than any of the uh, stalker variants because you see, I, I like to I like to play uh, Borderlands through at mid range, and uh, if you're playing at mid range uh, a large portion of the time, the hot loaders, as Cloud was showing off, explode after you deal after you deal about half of their health, and uh, that can be a problem at, at melee range. Yeah. Also, they're the only enemy in the game that I've seen, aside from a couple of nomads, that actually has a flamethrower. And flame and uh, fire damage is something that, although you can get relative resistance to uh, relatively early on, it's not something that you're likely to have because it's a shield bonus. And your shield bonuses can, if you're going for elemental resistances at all, can have any of the five elemental resistances on them. Well, that's why you have a backup fire immunity shield in your inventory. And then you are free as long. I mean, basically, if you're playing by yourself, you're free to go to the pause menu. If you're playing multiplayer, then you're you're subject to damage that enemies can inflict on you while your buddies are still playing. There's a badass repair surveyor. You'll note that he still just dies in like a one shot of a good shotgun. Yeah, and that's that's the theme with the fast enemies in this game. They usually don't have a lot of health, but they offset that by a high evasiveness. Now that or uh, or utility for uh, everyone else. All right, going through uh, going through the uh, the uh, Hyperion uh, Iridium power plant was actually relatively easy until we get to the tail end. Uh, although, it took me forever to figure out that I needed to ride the crane across the river. No, stop! Damn it! Ow. I don't think you can prevent that from happening, Cloud. You, you can't. If, if, Angel, if, if Angel is responding to it, it is a thing that you could not have possibly avoided even if you tried. Press the button, get on the cargo mover, <sighs> and wait for the cargo mover to recognize that we are on it. Yeah. There we go. Uh, Hyperion. What is a thresher? A thresher is a is. Have you ever seen um, have you ever seen Tremors with with Kevin Bacon? I was gonna go with a dune worm, but you know, tremors is more accurate. All right. Yeah, that's that's basically what threshers are. They they're like some kind of weird like sandworm slash tentacle monster. Mm, they have very powerful melee attacks, decently powerful range, <laughs> yeah, very attacks, powerful. and the ability to spawn a shitload, of, uh, and and a and the ability to spawn a shitload of variants with their tentacles. Although interestingly enough, and this is something that I just oh God, fucking sucker. learned. Threshers, their weak spot is their additional tentacles. At least for the or for the lead thresher. Uh, the baby threshers actually have glowing eye bits that you can shoot out, and that's actually really effective. I, I'm so jealous you've got a corrosive shotgun for this fight, because this fight took me a couple of attempts to take not to take him down. Joseph is a way to go. Alright, so. How many attempts is it going to take you to take down this Thresher? Uh, two? I think it takes me two attempts. No. Oh. oh, yeah, that's right. It doesn't take, it, do, it, you, it doesn't take me two attempts. It takes me like, it takes me like one and a half. Well, here's something that uh, you've already got advantage over me for. You've actually got an electric weapon and are and are actually at the thresher's level. I did this fight at 16 without uh, without a decent electric weapon, uh, and also I didn't know where the weak point was for the thresher. Uh, the, the, for this particular thresher, the weak points are the glowy eye bits on the head as well as the additional tentacles that it's spawning across the field. 
However, you'll notice that Cloud's not seeing those additional tentacles because those additional tentacles are out in the uh, field area. So, yeah. So, I, ki I did the thing. I killed the Thresher, but I still died. <laughs> but that's okay, because as long as the enemy died, yeah, it but... will remember that it's dead. Yeah, because this is actually another boss enemy. The Lunar Supply Beacon. You've got the beacon? Good. We can use that to request an uncalibrated fast travel unit from the moon base. You'll need a quiet place to set up the beacon. Head to the town of Overlook. Thanks to Hyperion's mining operations, the people of Overlook suffer from the Skull Shippers. They won't disturb us. And in the next part, we will head to Overlook so we can deal with a tower defense section. Yay. You know, except we don't have nearly as much HP as a tower. Ugh.